Well, hello everyone. I'm back with the English stream this time. And as was promised, I am going to discuss the so-called Greco Gambit, uh, which later on this week we will try to play. I mean, with this exact position that you see on the board, we will try to organize the tournament the whole tournament just a second i'll be back really soon my daughter is calling just a second Well, I'm sorry, yes, um, and in the chess queen club that I'm sure you are going to join in our weekly Sunday arena, we're going to try to play um, the whole tournament starting with the same position. And let me give you some insight about this position that appears on the board after the first move b4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 c3 knight f6 d4 e takes d4 c takes d4 and bishop b4 check knight c3 well uh, why is it so important to give a check on b4 since after bishop b6 um, white pawns are quite quite far advanced already and they can continue continue their mm, march forward and start attack attacking black knights which is quite unpleasant uh, probably the strongest move here for black is d5 but in that case it's still not so clear how to handle this pressure uh, in the center and I will just show you one uh, very short but quite demonstrative way uh, game uh, which was played a long time ago in 1933. You see how unfortunate it is if black needs to go uh, with the knight to h6, d5, attacking one more knight and d6, pushing it uh, even further, bishop g5. And here, checkmate. Yes, white checkmated black quite easily. So that's why after c takes d4, in this line of the Jacopiano game, uh, black usually replies with bishop b4 check. And here, it's a crossroad. White uh, has several interesting options, such as bishop d2, knight b to d2 and knight c3 which we are going to analyze today uh, and it's going to be the topic of our of this stream and of the tournament of my, the weekly tournament on my uh, chess queen uh, club on chess.com uh, all those moves knight c3 bishop uh, to d2 or knight b to d2 requires a pawn sacrifice i mean pawn sacrifice Knight takes e4 move is possible after almost every every white reply. Uh, and it's been, I mean, the theoretical part has been proven 
that uh, these sacrifices, although they look quite promising for white, they don't really give them any opening advantage. That's why usually in the modern days, if you watch uh, the top grandmasters uh, games, usually white replies with d3. And uh, they don't play d4 straight away and they continue into more positional approach. They play uh, in a slower mode, but try, hope to get uh, some advantage later on. Also, you might uh, have seen this e5 move, which is another very interesting direction we might discuss one day. But today we are looking at the very straightforward uh, attempt for white to get an advantage in the Jacobian. Knight to c3. Uh, how to continue with black when facing this? Um, we, can, we are going to call this line Greco Gambit. Why? Because, um, well, a very famous uh, Italian player, the one that uh, with whom the Italian uh, chess school uh, is usually asso associated with. The player of the 17th century uh, well, was known to use this line and uh, we know some of his games one game I'm going to demonstrate today, uh, which, well, which is quite famous. And uh, I think I've seen this game from like when I was a child and first I was introduced to uh, this line of uh, Greg Gambit and Jaco Piana and I was told to play Knight C3 because at that time it was considered to be a very interesting continuation. Okay, so how to play? Uh, black should accept this sacrifice, they should take on e4, d5, d5, I'm going to show you one very famous game that you might have seen already, and it actually started with the move d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5, and castle, and that's uh, one of the uh, main ideas for white here is to sacrifice the central pawns but to develop as fast as possible and try to attack uh, the king, the black king that is still in the center. And as we can see, for example, knight takes c3 is often mm, not enough and is often met with this uh, famous Greco sacrifice since accepting the rook will just lead to a devastating checkmating attack so it's really really um, you should not play like this when facing the Greco Gambit with black but let's see let's see what happened in the game I want to show you it was d5 a black played bishop to e6 bishop to g5 bishop to e7 a very very famous game that you might have seen White is putting pressure on this king that is still in the center, f6, queen e2, pinning the knight, attacking it once again, queen d7, rook a to c1, and here a black should have played king to f7, but they played c6, and I'm sure some of you is very familiar with this game, well, it's been... Um, published in every single <laughs> manuals of chess combinations because it's a famous game between uh, the first world champion Wilhelm Steinitz and von Bardeleben. Yes, correct. And the right continuation here is this wonderful, brilliant d5 breakthrough attacking in the most, um, in strongest, strongly protected square, but Unfortunately, unfortunately for black, white pieces are just too powerful on the two open lines. Uh, the game followed with c takes d4, the knight to d4, that the idea behind the sacrifice, freeing the space uh, to this knight, that will go to e6. Knight went to e6, 
bishop a queen to g4 knight g5 discovered attack and brilliant another brilliant uh, sacrifice rook takes e7 using the fact that after queen takes e7 rook c8 will follow and white will win uh, the game so black tried to do his best and played king to f8 rook f7 very stubborn rook continues uh, her dance along with the king rook to g7 king f8 loses because of knight takes h7 white wins the game like this and in the game king to h8 followed and i think according to the legend after rook takes h7 uh, black i mean one bar the lemon just left the playing hole and never returned uh, thus the game has been declared uh, lost for black and happy Wilhelm Steinitz showed uh, the continuation that he was to play on the game wonderful example of coordination and attack with queen and knight well that's a very famous game and actually it happened in this greco gambit that we are discussing so after bishop b4 knight c3 it's better to take on e4 actually you should take on e4 uh, and it's very important to know this line because d5 can lead to a quite an unpleasant position with the king in the center and um, and um, many problems are had. So the right way for black to continue is bravely take on e4. And the idea behind this break or gambit is, of course, not to spend, not to waste time protecting the knight on c3. That was not the main goal for white. Uh, the main idea of white behind sacrificing the pawn on e4, but to continue with development and to castle. And now a very interesting position appears on the board. Uh, this famous uh, Greco game that I was talking about continued with knight takes c3, b takes c3, and here black made a mistake. They took on c3. Actually, the position is still quite unclear, uh, but uh, black needs to play d5. That's the only move here. They need to counterattack and to close a white squared bishop and the idea after um, rook e1 to play on e7 and then castle like this so okay probably white's position is a little bit better due to better development but it's not so clear it might be about equal and if uh, white takes on b4 black takes on c4 and after rook e1 they cover the king with knight e7 queen a4 again another another shield um, with the bishop and this position also visually probably is a little bit better for white but black can hold I checked it with a very strong computer and surprisingly uh, surprisingly um, even though knight takes c3 has been considered as an inaccuracy for black it's possible it's possible to play but then you need to uh, reply with d5 the famous Greco game however after knight takes c3 b takes c3 continued with bishop takes c3 and that's already a mistake probably the strongest move for white here is uh, bishop a3 straight away not letting uh, black king uh, to escape from the center but greco continued with queen to b3 sacrificing the rook and here again the only chance for black could have been this uh, move pawns move to d5 uh, with the idea to castle uh, and uh, why why do we play d5 in order to uh, get the bishop under queen's attack because if we castle straight away then queen takes c3 will come 
and uh, black will lose the bishop. So d5 is the only attempt here to try to get back into um, the game. But, but in the game of Greco, uh, his opponent continued with uh, bishop takes a1. And in that case, bishop takes f7 check. Bishop g5 attacking the queen. Um, king knight to e7. In case of knight takes d4, it's very important here not to uh, give check on b4 because then white will just lose the game. Um, black will be able to protect, to defend himself. So it's very important to give a check here on a3. That's the way to continue. In that case, there are no more tricks connected with c5. And after king takes f7, bishop takes d8, uh, white wins the queen then. They'll grab the bishop on a1, and the king is too open uh, to be able to hold. Uh, but the Greco game continued with knight to e7, and then knight e5, a very nice move. And white's uh, idea is to play bishop to g6. For example, if d6, bishop to g6 uh, comes, queen f7 is a threat, and after d5, queen f3, um, white is winning. In the game, black took on d4, but then bishop g6 anyway, d5, queen f3, and that's a very famous position that I studied in this game. I think I studied when I was just starting to play chess, when I was 6 or 7 years old, and that's the game I knew by heart and wanted to uh, achieve on the uh, playing board when applying this Greco gambit. Um, but it's not it's not it's not necessary for black to uh, fall into this opening trap yes the, the first game was uh, that we discussed was Stenitz bar the 11 and um well, actually, the very first game that we discussed with bishop b6 here was the game between uh, Boleslavsky and Sitov in Moscow 1933. Then we discussed that it's not the best option for black to play d5. And I showed you a very nice example uh, of the game. Uh, a very nice example in this line um, with the game Stenitz World 11. Then we continued with knight e4, which is the strongest way for black to play here, castle. And here I said that knight takes e3, always considered to be a mistake. And um, actually, bishop only bishop takes e3 seems to be a very serious um, blunder here for black. Instead, after d5, it seems that black is holding. So it's possible to take with the knight, but then you should know this d5 move and the positions that uh, appear in this uh, particular line are quite unclear and black can, can hold. But it's, it's not the only way for black to, uh, to equalize. And the strongest move here has always... Uh, well, it's, it's, it's been known for many years now, and it is bishop takes c3. And the idea behind this move, well, if a white takes with the pawn, then black just play d5, then castle, and get a good position. They are able to support the knight on e4, and uh, maybe, maybe even uh, they have better chances. So white that plays this line they don't take the bishop but instead they continue the game with a very nice counterattack, which is d5 and if black doesn't know how to play they might um, well they might be shocked by so many uh, unexpected uh, uh, attacks that uh, who knows who knows uh, they can do something something um, wrongly in fact there is nothing there is nothing bad 
in black position just yet. In fact, they have several good options. And I'm even not sure, I'm thinking, what about castling? Is it possible to castle? Well, maybe just after the castle, mm, the problem is that uh, black's knight is not supported on e4 and uh, it's easy for white to attack it later on. Uh, so two moves can be suggested for black. One is knight to e5. I think that was the move that I studied uh, a long time ago when playing this line uh, with black. The idea is after b takes c3 to take on c4, and after queen d4 castle, and uh, white needs to take one knight. <laughs> one way or the other, it can lead to the same position after, for example, queen takes e4, knight d6. And uh, despite the fact that black is not developed yet and white can hope to create some pressure around this h7, um, h7 square after, for example, queen to d3, but usually black should be able to finish development by playing b6 and developing the, knight, the bishop to b7 and even though even though the position looks quite scary right uh, the queen and the knight looks at this h7 pawn but in fact after f5 um, uh, it seems that black will be able to hold and we should remember that black still has a pawn up so they still have an extra pawn Thus, uh, whether white has enough compensation for this pawn or not, it's not so clear. And uh, there is a game in my opening files uh, with this variation by Vishwanathan Anand that played with black in his match against Fritz Six in 1999. And he was able to win this game, but computer actually didn't play so well. I mean, the computer just, let, uh, just offered uh, this uh, queen's exchange. And thus, um, and thus just uh, get, I mean, got to the position with uh, pawn down, this endgame with pawn down, so it's not really the best way for white to continue. But nevertheless, uh, that means that after d5, not e, knight e5 is a possibility for black to play. Black can make this move, uh, and sometimes they do make it. Uh, and just hope that uh, in this particular position, the compensation that white has for the moment, uh, we, um, of course, should agree that uh, there is some pressure that white uh, can put all around the king uh, due to undevelopment of black pieces. And black should be careful, should be careful, for example, after queen to f4, uh, with the idea somewhere to play um, bishop to a3, white, black has a very nice maneuver with the rook to e4, although I'm not sure it's the best way for black to proceed, anyhow, anyhow, knight e5 is possible, but some players prefer the other move, it's, it's really a question, a, question, a question of taste, what to prefer and which position to play, as I already mentioned, uh, there are several options for black in this line. Uh, that's why the Greco Gambit is not being played uh, with white on a very high level. Uh, bishop to f6 is another strong reply for black. Uh, why not knight to d6 to avoid losing the knight? Uh, which when? Here. Knight to d6. Uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Well, I mean, two pieces are under attack, right? And, uh, well, probably white will just take on c3 and, yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, here they can always take back. Your king is still in, um, in the center. Let me double check. Let me double check uh, what will follow. That's true that knight d6 is another option uh, to remove the knight. And um, oh, the only problem is that um, you still have the king in the center. And uh, that means that you will need to do something about it. Probably knight d6 is also possible. 
is also possible as I said there are several ways for black to play to face this line with you just need to pick up a line that seems to be uh, well less dangerous to play after knight d6 white can take on c6 d takes c6 and here the problem is that if you take uh, the bishop then you are losing because of queen to e2 check if you protect the king with the queen then queen takes c4 follows and here you end up again in this very unfortunate situation where the bishop is under attack the king and the queen are on one line so if the bishop just retreats you'll get to this unpleasant pin and uh, thus after d takes c6 black needs to be very careful and they need to play uh, like this they need to castle and then white uh, can try to well to to put some pressure on black because after queen e8 the queen is lost suddenly so f6 is the only move queen d5 check king h8 and again maybe this position is holdable maybe it's possible to make a draw here there were some games uh, with this position um, and yeah why not why not i mean if you're ready if you know this line if you analyze it a little bit further on uh, then maybe maybe even knight d6 is possible here but again you should be ready and prepared uh, to uh, with strong replies probably like the line with the only with several of the only moves after white's uh white's moves and white takes so knight d6 might be a possibility but as i already mentioned there are several ways several ways uh, to play here with black um knight f knight to e5 i was told uh, to be the strongest but later on i realized that it might not be the case there are several other good moves for black um, for example bishop to f6 and uh, here rook e1 white usually plays knight e7 rook takes e4 uh, here it's a crossroad whether to let white play uh, d6 after castling and uh, again here is a position where uh, white is a pawn down but they do get some pressure some compensation for it most likely everything will be exchanged and uh, the d pawn will be won back with uh, by white and will reach uh, an equal end game probably so castling is possible it's possible to castle but it's also possible to play d6 and try to be greedy and to mm, not let white push d6 not let white to equalize so easily and maybe even hope for more but of course uh, d6 is a more risky uh, way which is possible anyway because white can start uh, start something crazy with g4 and if h6 h4 Mm, so black needs to be ready for some crazy lines like this or after d6 white can play bishop g5 bishop takes g5 queen knight takes g5 and here again a crossroad um, two moves are possible and can be recommended one is just castle not being scared of knight takes h7 which seems to be which seems to lead to a draw. Uh, was a very funny, was a very funny way. But again, uh, you need to know. <laughs> you need to know your um, your moves when playing this line with black. And as you can see, you can try your luck when playing this line with white. Because according to uh, my opening uh, file. It's only a draw here. 
Uh, so castle is a possibility. Another way, maybe not, uh, less risky, is to play h6. And after knight f3, you are ready to cast. And if black, if white creates a very strong looking battery on the e file, it does seem to be scary. But here comes a very important move to remember, which is bishop to e6. With the idea to close the e file like this, after d takes e6, black plays f6, and it seems that black's position is fine, and even maybe they can hope to win this game later on. Okay, it's still up to you whether to um, let white pawn to e6 and get this position or not but as i said there are real chances for black to play for a win for example g6 here quite an important move and it seems it seems that white might have something but in fact with accurate play uh, black manages to um, stop the attack and even castle long side suddenly the rook is hanging so queen f6 is not dangerous because of uh, queen takes e1 and then long side castle. Very, very uh, difficult lines. I know that it's a lot of material to uh, remember and recall. Yes, it's just a small, small opening line, but for you just to have an idea how enormous uh, opening theory is nowadays, it just we discussed one small little line that um, doesn't uh, does not uh, really um, uh, is not the main line is not considered to be the strongest way for white. But if you play this uh, the Jaco piano with black, if you start your game with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5 uh, with black, then you should definitely know this line by heart. You should learn it, you should uh, remember it, because if you face it during a practical game without knowing all these lines and all these nuances, well, most likely you will either lose pretty fast or you will spend so much time that you'll get in time trouble and will make blunders in the time trouble. So you better you better do your homework. You better do your homework before uh, playing Jaco Piano. And I showed you just one line. There are several other uh, very um, interesting lines and options for white, such as Evans Gambit. And here, not only knight c3 should be considered by bishop to d2 and knight b to d2 but i think we'll get to these moves later on because for the moment to start with it's a good uh, it's a good start i've i've given you many many lines many uh, instruct instructional games um, very many important uh, uh, ways for black to play and to remember uh, and in order to absorb it better, that's good to listen to it, but you also need to try it in your practice. And so I suggest you to join my uh, club, chess, uh, chess.com, the chess queen club, and we are going to give it a try. We're going to organize a thematic tournament on the Greco Gambit on this position. So all the games will start with this exact position and then you can try it with white with black and see what you like what you don't like and maybe you will be able you will be able uh, to use uh, this knowledge that you just got in your game in your games and it will help you uh, make stronger moves uh well i mean we started we picked up one line right for the next week we can pick up another line and discuss it in, in also in 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 one of the streams uh, but so to sum up bishop before is a move to continue with black when white is playing like the most aggressively in the jaco piano 
Then after knight to c3, black should take on e4. Uh, castle here uh, starts uh, uh, to... Here comes uh, different crossroads that black needs to pick from. Well, better to play bishop takes c3, although knight takes c3 and then d5 seems to be possible, although quite risky. Bishop takes c3, d5, and uh, most likely white will continue with d5, otherwise you will play d5 yourself. And uh, here, uh, here uh, you should learn a few, I mean, maybe just one line which suits you most. It can be the move knight e5 and then play the position like this with some compensation for white but with an extra pawn uh, on the other hand uh, for black it can be even the move knight d6 that you that some of you suggested but here uh, it seems uh, to be quite risky and it might be possible oops not like this sorry castle it might be possible to hold but again you need to analyze it uh, uh, precisely and prepare it. So one of the main lines that I would suggest you uh, learn if you study this line for black is bishop to f6. It's more complicated than knight to e5. After knight e5 there are less lines to remember. It's just knight e5, knight c4 and castle. And then you try to finish your development. While after bishop f6 you will still need uh, to learn uh, some uh, variations, especially especially if you don't want to let white play d6 and get equality, but want to fight for more uh, when playing black here, you should analyze more deeply uh, with computer at home, the moves g4 connected to his h4, they should not be dangerous for black, but anyway, it uh, would be advisable to uh, see how computer reacts, what you are going to do if you are faced with such uh, such a courageous play from the white side, they might pick uh, this move, and uh, of course you should uh, know how to react after bishop uh, g5, uh, bishop takes g5, knight uh, g5, uh, castle seems to be Castling seems to be possible, but then again, knight takes h7, gets uh, white, uh, quite a dangerous attack, which seems to be only enough for a draw. But if you're playing with black, was you're ready uh, to play uh, under continuous uh, attack uh, and just hope for a draw, uh, that's uh, uh, another question. Or you can... Uh, Try to remember the line that starts with h6 and then a very important move, bishop e6. Closing the e-file and thus leaving uh, black with uh, uh, an extra pawn. Uh, rook takes e6 uh, is, not, is not giving anything for white. Maybe just one check is possible, but that's, that's basically it. Uh, and after d takes e6, f6, the position, the e file is closed. The black's plan is to play c6, queen a5, and then uh, alongside castle. Or queen c7 or queen b6, it really it depends on the position. And uh, thus, uh, black even uh, get a chance to win this game, which is probably why uh, white is not playing on this line often. But again, for a blitz game, it might be a good try. Um, and we are going, we are going to give it a try on Sunday, this coming Sunday. Have I played it over the board in rated games? Well, I did play it when I was small <laughs> in my uh, um, children's tournaments. I mean, when uh, I was competing under 10 years old and so. Uh, so I did use this line with... Uh, with uh, white, I uh, my opponents tried this line several times, and I was uh, uh, saving. I mean, I was playing with black in many many blitz games. Uh, however, in tournaments practice, I think I opted several times for bishop to d2, but that's another story, and we might analyze uh, this line uh, again 
in details but uh, next time uh, because it also requires a lot of uh, nuances and lines and about 93 no i don't think i played it over the board with white because as i uh, showed you it's quite risky white uh, sacrifices a pawn and they can end up without being without a pawn and thus give black uh, too many chances to win which i'm not happy about when playing uh, with white Uh, why can't you see past broadcast? Well, because probably you're not a subscriber for my channel and it's only for subscribers. You can, however, uh, watch uh, some of them on my YouTube channel. I do put some um, of like the most exciting, the most exciting uh, broadcasts uh, on my YouTube channel. What maximum rating opponent would you try it on with white? I mean, guys, if you uh, study it well enough and uh, find the way for white to equalize in the main line and main line by main line i mean bishop to f6 if you will manage to find the way for white to like be certain and make a draw here then you can try it with anyone i mean especially in the blitz game why not but the other question is what what if uh, this gambit is not enough to equalize then whether you want to take such risk when playing white mm, well it's really up to you it's up to you uh, well to tell you the truth i think it should be possible like if you work really well I and mean, if you study really well uh, this uh, continuation to be able to find like the exact way for white to equalize uh, if you manage to do so if you <laughs> have uh, this time uh, then why not then why not why not queen to h5 in this position well probably because uh, black will be able to castle and they suddenly castle protect the f7 square and attack the knight and again it might seem uh, to um, be quite dangerous for black but in fact white cannot create any extra threats and black wants to grab the knight and play bishop f5 and bishop g6 um, so otherwise otherwise i'm gonna finish with that for today it's definitely more than enough for one stream a lot of lights a lot of exciting variations um and and hopefully they gonna help you to understand better this gambit and maybe maybe even try it in some of your games with white or well if you're playing this line jaco piano with black you just must know the slides by heart uh, we'll see we'll see on sunday we'll see how it goes we'll discuss um, about my match with Ostrovsky and Levy, I mean, I would gladly play with another opponent. Matches are always exciting. It's sometimes, I mean, I'm not really the one who is looking for uh, the opponents. <laughs> I'm sure I can find many, many uh, interesting op opponents and many great opponents. And next week I'm going to have uh, quite a few very interesting streams so stay tuned uh, make sure to uh, join my discord uh, server i'm trying to publish a uh, schedule for the coming week every sunday over there and um, well i hope you enjoyed this opening opening stream and um, talk to you soon actually i have scheduled uh, I have scheduled uh, a stream for tomorrow morning already at 9 a.m. Central European time on the new episode of my Chess Killer Tips podcast and I haven't prepared it yet. So I will I will finish for now. We'll go, we'll run and try to prepare something for tomorrow morning and I'll be back with another stream in English 
tomorrow morning so hopefully hopefully you're gonna uh, be present as well and uh, we'll talk then we'll talk then uh, thank you so much for listening for discussing this Greco Gambit line and again I hope to see all of you really soon take care guys yes 9 9 a.m so <laughs> quite early take care guys all the best let me see who is streaming now to send you to a raid to send you to a raid well Jan Nipomni is streaming so that's an easy pick I'm going to send you to Jan's channel and see you all tomorrow I hope we agreed on that Take care, guys. Bye. Okay, here comes Jan.